The Lunenburg County Lifestyle Center is the home of the South Shore Lumberjacks in the Maritime Hockey League. And this week, it has been the home of the 2022 Para Hockey Cup. Hello and welcome to Bridgewater, Nova Scotia on HockeyCanada.ca in partnership with HN Live. I am Dave Dawson. It is semi-final Thursday. Game number one of this pits the top team, Team USA, undefeated right through the round robin up against Italy. 0-3 in the round robin. These two foes went toe-to-toe -to -toe earlier in the event, a game that the USA had a 7-0 lead going into the third period. And the Italians outshot them 3-2 with two Two of those being goals and Alessandro Andreoni knows that putting pucks at the net will create some success for his program. We are improving our gameplay and we are trying to improve our defense zone but we are really uh, convinced about our uh, forward uh, skills so we, we are trying and today we know that it's hard but we will try. And against USA, they're a pretty powerful opponent. How are you able to get more pucks in the other end to get some shots on goal? Uh, yeah, we know uh, we we want really to go through uh, pucks on on the board and try to not to do icing and try to go on forward as soon as possible. But we know that the defense zone is the hardest thing with the US. <laughs> And for Team USA captain Josh Pauls to get back to yet another gold medal game, it's all about fine-tuning the small details. Against the Italians, we just really need to make sure we're moving the puck well. I mean, they do a great job like Canada does of clogging the middle, taking away that slot where we like to shoot. So I think we really just need to make sure we get them moving, let them work the puck on the outside, work some crosses, work some scissors, uh, get draw their defenders out into space, and then open up some lanes for us. And I really think that uh, if we can do that, we're going to have some success. That overtime winner last night must have been exciting to be a part of. What was that like? Yeah, I mean, anytime Declan Farmer has the puck in the slot, I mean, it's it's dangerous for anybody. So I'm just glad he's on my team. But uh, I mean, Canada played a, a phenomenal game last night, and you know, I think there were there were definitely a lot of things we can clean up, and I'm sure they would say the same thing. But um, you know, we're just ready to ready for the Italians heading into today. As we go in house With to the Dave two Walker. Captains, please meet at center ice for the ceremonial faceoff. That is Josh Pauls from Greenbrook, New Jersey, and Gianluca Cavaliere from South Tyrol, Italy, the two captains of each program. We would now ask that you please rise if you're able, remove your hats for the playing of our national anthems.
Members of the local chapter of the Special Olympics group, the part of the honorary crowd to drop the ceremonial puck drop. And welcome inside the Lunenburg County Lifestyle Center, the Clearwater Arena, on Hockey Canada.ca in partnership with HN Live. Dave Dawson, here it is, the first game of the semi-final Thursday. Only four games remain in the 2022 Para Hockey Cup. The fourth meeting in history between these two programs and the para hockey event and the second of this tournament starting between the pipes today for team italy is gabriella araudo it has been julian castlatter is getting the bulk of the workload so far in the late stages of the tournament they go back to araudo he's played two games he stopped 29 of 30 23, excuse me, of 29 shots, 7-11 goals against and a 7.93 save percentage. That game, 9-2 in day number two. USA had a 7-0 lead in Italy, battled back and scored two straight, 13 seconds apart. And on the other end of the ice, it's Griffin Lamar, the two goaltenders who faced uh, the least amount of shots in this tournament, or I should say played the least amount of minutes, is Griffin Lamar. Only seen six shots, and he's seen two of them go by him. And those were both off of Italian players' sticks. Five to one in the semifinals in 2017. USA beat Italy. Ten nothing in the round robin. Nine to two in this round robin. And we will wait and see what the final score is here as the winner goes off to the gold on Saturday on TSN. Our friends will be taking over for the rest of the tournament after today. So two games left for us, and we're excited to do this one. And thanks for watching wherever you're tuning in from. Roybal and Mishevitz lead the way in a two-on-one. Roybal, what a pass to Mishevitz, touching it to Douglas. He scores. 29 seconds into this one. Are they going to call it a goal? They will. The net went off. Team USA early on has a one to nothing lead. Chris Douglas, his first goal of the tournament. Only one American player without a point in this event. Up until yesterday, that was Douglas. And now he's got his first goal. Noah Grove, the only player on America without a goal in this tournament so far, or a point, I should say. Every other American player has a point. So not the start that Italy was looking for, but a good one for David Hoff, the fifth-year head coach of Team USA. And they're on the attack again. And by the net. Goal scored by number 17, Chris Douglas. Assist to number four, Brody Royball. And number 24, Josh Misowich. Royal Mashevitz get the assist on Douglas's goal. St. Cloud, Minnesota native. Playing his 50th game internationally. Lead pass up to Nichols. On the forehand, the right hand. Nichols. Radice on the backside to break it up. And he shoots and scores. Two shots, two goals. That's the start USA was hoping for. Story coming into this one was the Italian shooting percentage, which was pretty pristine. Four goals on their last seven shots. And not the best start for Gabriel Arauto. As Italy in a hole. Scored by number 18, Evan Nichols. Assist by number eight, Jack Wallace. Time of that goal, 13.42. Devin Nichols, the Haymarket Virginia native, playing in his second international tournament, as now his third goal. Cross ice Kaufman has an assist in the 2022 Para Hockey Cup as well. Had a great chat with Mirko Bianchi before the game, the head coach of a Team Italy, and he said that he's trying to build this program. A couple of their top players are not here with their squad as we're going to have a delayed penalty call coming. So 
two minutes in. We've already had two goals and now a power play coming up. But just trying to be able to play with Team USA and raise the level of competition. This won't help. A team penalty coming up against their captain. And Team USA going to the power play. Number one ranked power play in the whole tournament. They're three for four. Well, Italy on the penalty kills, four for seven, but they do have the only shorthanded goal in the Para Hockey Cup. Draw to the left side of Arauto. Gianluca Cavalier, two minutes for a team. Time that penalty, 12.56. Cavalieri, the team penalty is Mashevitz almost slid it past Arauto in front of the net. Dodson on the half wall, cycles it around Royball. Rody Royball. Skates into neutral, side of the net for Dodson. Dodson in behind him. Travis Dodson from Domingue, New Mexico, been at the program since 2013. Puck goes over top of the net, now Roybal. Second all time in scoring, shot at the net is blocked. Trying to slap it out, stops at the left point for Douglas. Douglas at the net, touching it for Mashevitz on the side, trying to tap it in and pass to Rado behind the net. And the Italians will take the time to center down with a minute gone on the power play. Well, that's goaltender Griffin Lamar from Haverhill, Massachusetts. Plays it up on the left side for Jack Wallace from Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. Been part of this program since 2016. Musselman now. Ben Musselman, good tournament for him. Six points, and that was fourth game. Three goals, three assists. Wallace, crafty with it. Wallace still has it. Cradles, drops it off, side of the net shot. Oh, what a save by Arauto. I thought they might have went in. Arauto got the glove hand on it. Wallace again tries to bring it out in front in Italy, making a wall in front of the net. Puck still loose, though. Official in great position. <laughs> Left point now, Wallace. Bringing it out the net. Run it back door at feet, and they score. On the doorstep, the tap in, the power play goal. It's Nichols again. Right as the power play was ready to expire. Team USA. Three goals yesterday against Canada and an overtime win and they've already got three in the first four minutes. by number 18, Evan Nichols. Assist to number 11, Joseph Woodkey. And number 88, Kevin McKee. Time of that power play goal, 10.59. Woodkey McKee draw the assist on Nichols goal. Another shot on Bolton. And a glove save by Arauto. Three goals on five shots. Farmer at the net, drops it off on the side. Cavalieri trying to whip it away. Torella. On it, Jones now. Whistles wide on the short side. Pauls tries to tap it in. What a save by Arauto. The captain on the doorstep. And hangs on for the draw. Didn't even get to the officials for today's game. And dropped it in right now. Referees are Blaze Curry, Brad Murray, and Rylan O'Rourke are on the lines as well. Do you think you know hockey inside and out? Are you interested in getting back to the rink, looking for opportunities to stay involved in the game? Turn your passion for hockey into a career. Hockey Candidate Officiating Program offers fulfilling opportunities for participants of all ages to get involved. Make the right call. Go to hockeycanada.ca slash officiating to get started. A chance right in front of the net again. America, more pressure on. As expected, I think if you are a longtime fan of para hockey, 
But based on the momentum of this game, even chatting with Mirko Bianchi for the game, the head coach of Italy said, we kind of know what to expect after now the end of the fourth day. And this roster sizes the difference as well. Having a shorter bench does Italy and the powerhouse United States team has medaled every year in the 14-year history, now the 14th year of the Para Hockey Cup. Only three times have they not won gold. Five times, I should say, excuse me. And they're on it again. Make it 4 nothing. as Brody Royball right in front. So Brody Roybal's fourth goal of the tournament. That's number 94 all time for him. So we had Tyler McGregor, the captain of Canada, hit the century mark yesterday. Maybe Roybal. I don't know. There's a long way to go, but with how high power this American team is, I'm sure he'd love to get there before this is over with. By number 24, Josh Misowicz. Assist number four, Brody Royball, and number 37, David Ustas. My viewpoint, I thought it was Royball who popped it in, but Mishevitz, the one announced as the goal scorer. Either way you look at it, four to nothing, eight zip. Shots on goal in favor of America. Five and a half into this one, and it already has the makings of being a fairly lopsided affair. More pressure on for Team USA, and they did say, the captain Josh Pauls before the game, how it doesn't matter who their opponent is, they want to get back to doing some of the things really well, correcting some of the mistakes, and had a 2-0 lead against Canada last night. Canadians came back, scored twice, and the overtime winner on the power play by Declan Farmer. Farmer's sixth of the tournament, the tournament leader of points. And Wallace is going to bring it up the ice for USA. Over the stripe, picked off, and it's going to be a break for Cavaliere. Does he have enough gas to get there? Just going to dump it at the net, and Lamar going to knock it out of the way. Obviously, a defenseman not wanting to put himself in a position. Wallace turning around. Wallace fires, scores. What a shot by the crafty Wallace for Team USA. Going to need an abacus before this uh, game is over. <laughs> How many goals being piled up here? Well, most goals by... Jack Wallace. Assist to number 88, Kevin McKee. Time of that goal, 827. Most goals by one team in one period is eight. And that was back in 2011 between Canada and Norway. And then Canada and Japan again in 2012. Four teams did it with seven. So already five goals with 8.09 remaining in the opening period. On semifinal Thursday, winner goes on to the gold on Saturday afternoon. Oh. Large to hard contact there. He had the two goals 13 seconds apart in their preliminary matchup on day number two. Kaufman now on the dump in. Taken away by Declan Farmer. Farmer in front for Jones. Jones rips it off the heel of his stick. In behind Macri. Macri now stopped to the right point and boots over his stick and out to neutral. Yeah, it's Bolton. Oh, shovel it along. Bumps there with Macri. For just joining us, an onslaught of American goals early on here, including the first one. Only 28 seconds into the contest. Their fourth meeting all time. Team USA coming off an overtime win over Canada last night. Very similar to 2016. 
when this was in Bridgewater uh, the last time. Where Team USA on their final round robin game beat Canada 2-1 and ended up winning the gold medal against Canada. And Canadian fans would love a different fate in this one. They play Czechia at 7 o'clock Atlantic time tonight. Douglas sends it across Mishevitz. Backside Roy Ball fires and Arado saves. Rebound is still loose and the official blows it dead. 6.32 remaining. Media timeout. Stay with us. We will return to Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. And we're through the media timeouts here at HockeyCanada.ca in partnership with HN Live. I'm Dave Dawson. Calvin Bellows, Corey Bro, your broadcast team as well here in Bridgewater, Nova Scotia for the 14th annual Para Hockey Cup. And it's been an exciting one so far. We're into semifinal Thursday. Three games follow this one. One game today, Friday is a day off, and then the two on Saturday, the bronze and the gold medal games. And Team USA, the defending champs, Roybal puts it at the net and knocked away by Araudo. Araudo, 11 shots in-house, 11 to two so far in favor of Team USA. Short side off for Rang Eustis and Araudo is gonna jump on top of that one. So yesterday, Canada, Drop that one to U.S. Uh, America outshot him 23 to 10. Mishevitz, Eustis, and Farmer, the overtime winner. Lee made eight saves for the victory, and many of them sensational. Czechia beat Italy 23, or excuse me, 3 to 2. Shots were 23 to 4. Depali had a pair. Well, Castlatter made 23, saw 23 shots, made 20 saves. Wallace, backside. Can't connect with McKee. The way McKee was shooting the puck in warm-up, unbelievable. The whole tournament long, one of those underrated players. He can pick a corner like nobody's business. Nichols in front for McKee, and it goes through off of Macri, I believe, and wide. More pressure by Team USA. Zipping at Araudo, glove save, and McKee right on the doorstep and is awaiting for the face-off. And there is the aforementioned Kevin McKee from Davenport, Iowa. Fourth all-time in scoring, 48 goals, including 118 points. Drawn to the right side of Arado. Off the draw, it's Jones. Jones sidesteps Kaufman, walking in. Jones, nope, not what he likes. The whole cycle of Pauls. The captain, Josh Pauls. I got to meet him and interview him before the game, and I shook his hand and said, you know, I kind of, want to, do you mind if I get a picture with you? <laughs> I just had to stutter through that, and we had just talked about how tremendous privilege it is to be able to do these things, and he said, well, I mean, you can meet me in another year if you want to do it again. And I said, that's, that's the goal. I'm hoping I get to do next year. <laughs> really, really amicable guy to talk to. So much moral integrity and well-spoken. When you're the captain of Team USA, all those things follow. As Pauls, well, it's Farmer. As it flips it in the corner to Jones. He made a funny comment about that overtime winner as well. He said, I was hoping Farmer wasn't going to pass it to me. He's like, dude, you got the puck there. Don't drop it to me, please. As Kaufman knocks Farmer down. He said, you're the guy who's going to put the puck in the net. Don't leave it for me. <laughs> Pretty funny conversation we had, so. In America, more pressure on. As scramble in front, and Arauda will sit on it. So great to talk to some of these Olympians. You watch Declan Farmer and Easley go off the ice, and you can go on and on about so many of these 
great players, Travis Dodson, a Marine Corps, lost his legs from a hand grenade in 2007, and has been part of this program since 2013. Stories upon stories upon stories of courage inspire anybody, absolutely anybody, to be able to hear the sacrifices these players make and the honor they have to play for their country. Roy Ball drops it off on the left side, and Mishevitz, puck goes over his stick. In behind Roy Ball, little flip sauce to the point for Douglas, hot across Dodson. No, it's not a power play. That's just how great America it is at controlling the pace, controlling the flow. Again, they've meddled every year since the start of this event in 2007. And been in the gold medal game in all but three. Roy Ball trying to send it through Douglas now as the Italians making a great wall in front of the net. And trying to go around the boards. To clear it out, they will. Chasing after it, well out of his net is Lamar. And now Dodson back there. Sends it along, Musselman. Trying to get by Kaufman. Had a good game so far for America. Cuts off his man, Torella. Short bench for Team Italy. If maybe it's the first time you're watching, only four defense and eight forwards. It's one of the, actually the main reasons why, if you look at the history of para hockey, why the periods are shorter, customarily, obviously, in stand up hockey, 20 minute periods, but in para, 15 just based on the amount of players and the length of the games. And they want to get it to 20 minutes as it's growing exponentially. You look at it in the communities. And Matteo Pelizzari, one of the players from Team Canada, 15 years old that I got to meet and have a great chat with yesterday, including his family. The sport is growing in BC. It's absolutely exploding out here in Nova Scotia. And they love to get it back to 20 minutes based on just the ability for it. It's exhausting. That extra five minutes makes a difference. Nichols zips it at the net, scores. And that's six for Team USA. And that's a hat trick for Nichols. The Haymarket Virginia product had one goal coming into this event. Only his second international event, one goal yesterday, excuse me, yeah, one goal coming into the event, had one goal coming into this game, and they're gonna give him the puck. Why not? The hat trick puck, give it over to the head coach. And the assistant coach, and they'll get the scribblings on that one. Third of the game, number 18, Evan Nichols. Assistant number eight, Jack Wallace. And number 14, Ben Musselman. Time of that goal, two minutes. Oh, big hit on Jones there is America looking for more again. Farmer drops it off easily. He's got Pauls to Farmer. Farmer fires, scores. Bar down. That's all Declan Farmer does. And they have now tied for second place in Para Hockey Cup history for first period goal total. Last time that stat was done was in 2019. Seven goals in one period. That's the second time they've done that in this tournament. Last time with Italy as well. Number 16, Declan Farmer. Assist to number 12, Rob Easley. Time of that goal, 127. Mishevitz, and trying to tie the Para Hockey Cup record for goals in a period is Team USA. Less about that, more than just continually keeping the pressure on as Dodson puts it at the net and misses. 
Team USA, the powerhouse, six-time defending gold medalists. The Paralympics, been dominant on the podium as well. Roybal plays it in front. Dodson just misses the net. 30 seconds left in the opening period. Roybal short side over top. Dodson, nope, can't keep it in. And that goes past him. 16 to 2, the shots in the opening period. Roybal past him. And they'll dump it in. The Italians will send it out. Larch will deflect it onto the American net. Doesn't get there, though, as Dodson back to retrieve. And good effort by the Italians there. I know that they knew coming in they had a tough task in hand. And great game by Team USA as well. Not giving up on it. Respect for the game, they called it. They want to continue to play their opponent and raise the competition up. Well, they've raised the bar here, 7-0 after 15 minutes. Stay with us. We will return to Bridgewater, Nova Scotia for the 2022 Para Hockey Cup. I don't think Brennan would have been able to play hockey without you guys funding them. He's a really smart kid. Like, he's one of those kids that are like, just good at everything he tries. Whether he's had tough times or not, you'd never know because uh, he never brings that to the rink. He goes on the ice, he gives it 100%. That's one thing that I really appreciate about him. Brennan doesn't have a father figure and he's still like so determined. Some kids get the positive male influence from their dad and he doesn't. So <laughs> I definitely think that he has built a sense of confidence around hockey and that's because of the coaches that he's had. They gave me a chance and that's basically it. Yeah. And because a lot of coaches wouldn't give me a chance at first and started doing good and they would give me a chance. And... When he's on his game and the way the team rallies around him, uh, he feeds on that and you know, he's a guy that kind of secretly nobody knows about until it's too late. She's been a single mom all her life, like ever since Brennan was a baby does everything on her own, juggles three kids. Like, she's amazing and they're so deserving of it. There were a lot of times, especially like this year, where I was like, 
I don't know how I'm gonna pay for this. I just feel like this is such a good way to help her because she was panicking when the hockey season was rolling by and she was asking me like, where am I gonna get this money? Because we got the assist fund, we were able to buy a new, new skates. <laughs> And so, like, it was like, okay, we're gonna be okay this year. <laughs> Hockey's the greatest game, and everybody deserves that opportunity. And if they wouldn't have applied for that, I wouldn't have Brandon. And I mean, he's a such a big role in our team. Don't be afraid to ask for help. There's so much support. Take advantage of it, and uh, be the next Kakaway. Dreams come true, it's an opportunity for Hockey Canada to work with the local minor hockey associations and our local member to get kids and families that maybe wouldn't have the opportunity involved in hockey to experience the game. In particular, you know, today's event is for girls. Get them equipment and get them on the ice so that it's affordable for everybody. And then assist them with their first year's registration as well. So it's a really great opportunity for that first experience for kids. I think as a Hockey Canada Foundation board member, you know, you're sitting on the Zoom calls or our in-person meetings when we were able to have them and you're making these decisions that you think are in the best interest of the game, but you don't get a chance to really understand the impact of those decisions until you come and you see the kids. And in particular, in my case, as a former women's team member, to see the young girls come out, they get that first set of equipment, you get to see the smiles, you get to see them, you know, step on, on the ice for potentially their very first time. And uh, it's nice to see that we're making the right decisions and, and getting out in the community and seeing the impact. This year especially, it's been a really tough year, as for everybody. We were really thinking actually not doing hockey this year. And then we actually had an email dropped on our lap and I was like, this just is too good to be true. There's just a lot of different positive things that come out of it. It keeps them busy, it keeps them out of trouble, it keeps it keeps structure and it also does so much for them when they get older. For a family of like us who have just moved in and to try a new game, this is a very good option. I would very much suggest everyone to ha attend and especially when there are these kind of initiatives. Let them try, let them try what they want, especially hockey being heart of Canada. Uh, this event really gave us um, kind of gave us hope again for hockey. Ever since the email came out, I was like, I applied right away and as soon as we got accepted, it was like even more exciting. To see donors step up and provide the resources so that uh, those who don't have the financial means can play the game. We're getting those uh, young girls into the game and young boys into the game, and it's just great for everybody. I think it's important dreams come true in programs like it so that we can give every kid in this country a chance to play the game, an opportunity to fall in love with the game of hockey and the life lessons that it teaches kids, you know, about respect and responsibility and discipline and hard work and learning about teamwork and learning about self-confidence and respecting yourself and all the things that you get to learn from the great game of hockey. I'm excited to meet new friends. I get to make new friends. From playing. I'm also most excited to skate and like try to score on the net. You know, this is a starting point in the journey of hockey for, for you know, all of these new, new participants. But in particular, as we come back from COVID and everybody comes back to the game, we want to make sure we're celebrating all that's positive. And that's teammates, that's friends, that's role models, physical activity, and enjoying what we believe is the greatest game. Thank you, Hockey Canada Foundation, for all your help. Thank you, Hockey Canada Foundation, for making my daughter's dreams come true. Have you ever wanted to combine academics with athletics or hockey with homework? The Hockey Canada Skills Academy gives young Canadians a chance to hone their skills through unique school-based program that includes more time on the ice, up to 400 extra hours every year, and an opportunity for staff to incorporate Canada's game into the curriculum. 
To learn more on how you can bring Hockey Canada Skills Academy to your school, visit hockeycanada.ca slash hcsa and we'll see you on the ice or in the classroom. Something else would become a sacrifice, but at yeah. the end of the day, you do what you do for your kids because it makes them happy. This just means everybody gets to be happy. He came out of the blue to me and he's like, Dad, I want to play hockey. I'm like, dude, it's over this year. You have to <laughs> wait. He's like, but I want to play hockey now. Like, if you can remember at the end of summer, we'll sign you up for hockey and you better learn how to skate. Well, the first time I asked, it was like after the season started, so I couldn't. Then all summer, from what I hear, is that's all I said. He's been at this for seven years, and it's, it doesn't get old yet. In the dressing room, he's, he's always smiling. Like, he's always happy with the, to be there with all his buddies. You know, I think that's a big thing for him. He's a very interesting kid. You can tell he's got a big personality, but he's not always outward with it. Because that's how you get rid of your phobia. It's just the never give up attitude and just happy to be out there regardless of whether they're winning or losing. It's impossible not to be proud of them. A hockey community in the river isn't hockey community, it's family. Yeah. Um, with, uh, you know, with, with Aaron's cancer diagnosis, the uh, all whites, teammates, friends, family, people we didn't know, but their kids play hockey in Deep River. Like, yeah, we're there. And uh, it's good. It's, uh, it's a very passionate community, but it's a very passionate family. Like there's uh, nothing like it that I've ever heard, ever seen. There are a lot of things she can't really come to the games or like not practices or she just has dropped me off. Uh, we've obviously had our, our struggles over the last couple of years and it's just amazing like the community involvement when you're in hockey is just mind-blowing. When we go to the arena it's game time or practice time and everything else melts away and you just get to enjoy watching your kids be happy. Minor hockey in Deep River is really good at uh, sending out reminders this year they had the link for the Hockey Assist Fund. I'm like, I've never seen that before, so I checked it out. Without it, I don't know how feasible hockey would have been. So it definitely helps out a huge amount and it's a huge stress reliever. Sometimes you gotta suck up your pride a little bit and apply them. At the end of the day, look at the smile on your kid's face when they, when they play, right? And, that, and that's what it's about. Thank you Hockey Canada Assist Fund donors for helping not just our kids play hockey, but all kids play hockey that want the chance. It couldn't happen without you guys. Thank you Hockey Canada Foundation for giving me an assist.
And we're back inside the Lunenburg County Lifestyle Center on HockeyCanada.ca in partnership with HN Live. I am Dave Dawson. And Calvin Bellows, Corey Brawley, our broadcast crew here. And the first of two semifinal games on a semifinal Thursday. Seven to nothing. Team USA leads as there's a goalie change for Italy. Julian Castlander now between the pipes. And in perfect poetic fashion, we get the opportunity to talk about him right now. Castlander, the only goaltender to be able to play an entire game of hockey without getting pulled in this Para Hockey Cup for Italy. 20 saves on 23 shots yesterday against Czechia. Where Rado and him split duty in the previous two contests. Cast ladder, a big reason why that game was only 3-2 yesterday as well. Italy with only four shots on goal in that one, and only two in this one after one period. Jones. On it. In case you're wondering, the tournament record for goals in a game is 14, because I know you are curious. Goals in a period is eight. USA has now done that seven twice in this tournament uh, as Italy dumps it in. And behind the net, Mishevitz on it. As Depali was right there. He had a pair of goals yesterday. And the 3-2 loss to Czechia. Czechia plays Canada. In the other semi tonight at 7 o'clock Atlantic time. Cavaliere. Right outside the U.S. bench. Trying to move it along. And Woodkey. Was corrected there by the communications. Uh, Seamus Kelly, by the way, has been really, really helpful and great guy to interact with and setting up all the interviews for us and really hospitable. Always get treated well by USA Hockey anytime I get to work with them. And Seamus has been so, so hospitable for us. Bolton firing on net and a glove save by Castellander, his first. 13-21 remaining in the second period. Also had a great chat. Oh, well, he's hanging on Cast Ladder there. We'll get to him uh, from Balzano, Italy. Cast Ladder, 39 years old. And a 48-year-old Gabriella Raudo. Part of the program since 2015. 20, or 2006, Italy's had a para hockey cup team, or a para hockey, I should say, a program since then when the Olympics were in Italy. And trying to build it continually year after year. And Mirko Bianchi talked about again, just he doesn't mind. You know, it's difficult being in these lopsided games, but it's the only way to be able to grow and challenge the players just to get better and better. And obviously, a lot of wisdom on that program. Gianluca Cavalieri, look at Radice there. Radice. 41 years old. Cavaliere, 51. With Nichols, already with three. Most goals in the game. Record is five. Bolton. And Macri overskates that. And off the glass. Not quite cleared out. As more pressure by Team USA. Nichols. Cross ice pass. Bolton. On his left hand. Goes steered into the corner. And America cycles. Farmer. And a flip pass to the right point, Pauls. Pauls turning around, sends it up there to Bolton, and nicely taken away by Enderle, I believe that was. No Radice. And Castellano will sit on that. And there's a look at Nichols, who's got three. Two goals coming into this one, only a second international tournament from Haymarket, Virginia. His uh, birthday is the day after my sister's. Want to make sure everybody knows that as well. That's important info. Draw to the right side of the goaltender, Cass Ladder. As the sniper, Kevin McKee, lines up for it. Watching him shoot a puck in warm-up is worth the price of admission on its own. He can pick the corners <laughs> just phenomenally. Musselman sends it across Nichols. Back to Ron. Retrievals. Battling with it is Larch. Speaking of picking corners, Larch did that well. Two goals, 13 seconds apart in the preliminary game against America. 
And the Italians clear it. Hear the communication there from Pauls. A little bit of different ambience than the last couple afternoon games with 1,500 students respectively. Or 1,000 tickets given away at least. As McKee puts it on the net. Right on cue, the seeing eye shot from 88. Gets it back again. McKee ridden into the boards by DePally. And kept inside the zone by Team USA. 20 to 2 the shots now in favor of America. And they're going to blow that dead. As Cavalieri's got his opinion on it himself. And Musselman goes off on the line change. Gianluca Cavalieri from South Tyrol, Italy. Goes off and some of his other teammates. We've had been in the hotel with Italy and Czechia and given us a great opportunity. That's why I have a little more stories from the other two coaches because I get to talk with them in the hotel and interact with them. And, and the Oak Island Resort, gorgeous part of the country. If you're ever in this part of the world, if you're looking for a vacation spot, you know, often they say in Canada, sometimes you maybe want to avoid going north in December or January, but this is a part of the country You'll more than happily come 12 months of the year. Calvin and I spent some time going through the Halifax region and got to see some of the great sights in this area. Oak Island Resort at the Atlantic Ocean, looking right out your back window, and the great folks at Hockey Canada, from Jody Kingsbury to Jen Sadler and Amanda Marple, Brandon Crow. I don't know the last names of the rest of them, but I could <laughs> list them all on. But they've all been so hospitable, all the staff here. It's been a tremendous honor to work with them this week. Has the puck loose in front. And Alessandro Andrioni, really well-spoken and amicable. I love the little chuckle at the end of his interview. One of the things we were talking about with the communication staff is some of the English is still a work in progress for some of these international groups. So we tended to avoid some of the interviews and stick with the coaching staff. But Andrioni was really well spoken and really amicable young man. And really enjoyed my pregame interview with him, that 25 year old. Wallace, out of the net, flip in front, and Roy Bull just missed the home run shot to the top shelf. Wallace being sandwiched along the glass by Andreoni as America's changing Woodkey now. Plays it in behind a farmer, centering attempt, and misses everybody. As Roybal back there to go and retrieve. As the goaltender Lamar desperate to touch the puck. <laughs> Not a lot to do on the other end of the ice when you got the American program so great offensively and defensively. You get a little bored back there. Roybal flipped in front, farmer missed the tap in. Wallace now. Left hand, right hand, a bolt, and then a chance maybe for the Italians. It could be a two-on-one, but hard on it on the back check was Woodkeep. And Larch and Napalli are the right guys to get a break. Four goals between those two young men. A long lead pass for Roybal. Going to try and skate it out, gets there before the icing. Directing traffic to Bolton in front. Now Farmer on it. Has the last goal in this hockey game. 10 points coming into the contest, trying to smack away at it. And the Italian defender laying in the crease. And they blow the whistle. Are they going to give him a penalty? It's going to be a penalty shot, closing his hand of the puck in the crease. So Team USA with a penalty shot here in the midway point of the second period. Well, let's have a look at the history books, the last time we've had a penalty shot. And it's going to be Brett Bolton taking it from Rockledge, Florida. Has yet to score an international based on my statistical research. So what a great way to get yourself on the scoreboard. His second international event has two assists, both of them in this tournament. There he is. Bolton on his right hand. What's he going to do? Bolton, top shelf, he scores. And that's his first goal. And they love it. Are they going to keep that puck too? 
They're going to run out of pucks here in Clearwater pretty soon. The Clearwater Arena. Yep, and Josh Pulse is asking for it right now. The captain on the flyby, and there we go. So the eighth goal, often a meaningless one, but a big one for Brett Bolt in his first in international competition. Congratulations, young man. The shot by number 10, Brett Bolton. Time of that goal, 9.20. A special moment for the 16-year-old Brett Bolton. Eustace, cross ice to McKee, oh boy, did he ever get bumped. And he's going to take a little bit of time to get up, but tough as they come, shakes it off. Nope, no problem, says David McKee. Not the first time he's been collided into and is now his 134th game internationally. Fourth all time in points for Team USA. Playing the goal horn a little late on that, but that's all right. Never, uh, never too late when you score your first goal. Musselman off the draw. So what other parts of history can we, we, can we get to here? Fatigue also a part of the broadcast crew. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a fun and a busy week. <laughs> In a lot of ways, exciting to come to a finish. Dodson puts it at the net, he scores. Goal number nine for Team USA. Domingue, New Mexico native, has his second of the tournament and has 13th goal internationally. Team USA goal scored by number nine, Travis Dodson, assist number 14, Ben Musselman, and number 88, Kevin McKee. Time that goal. And there is double digits. So now to 10 goals, and one more goal, and they'll be third all time for most goals by one team in one game. Canada, Japan did that three separate times, 2012, and in 2011, twice. Team USA goal scored by number 19, Malik Jones. Assist to number 12, Rob Easley. And number 24, Josh Misowich. Mishevitz having himself a game here today. 25 shots and 10 goals for Team USA. As Malik Jones lights the lamp and turns 20 years old next week on December 6th. Cavalieri, the captain, leaves it behind there for Kaufman. Tries to play it up to DePally, stopped by the Americans. And Bolton. Difficult conversations on both benches, you'd have to imagine, between both coaching staffs. One of them is, uh, you know, don't create sloppy habits and keep playing at a high level. There's another chance in front. And the goalie lights, or the goal light went on. A little predictory there. And obviously on the other bench, try to maintain your composure and put pressure on. All right, media timeout. We're going to take a short break and be back to Bridgewater, Nova Scotia shortly. Stay with us.
pack. And we are back in Bridgewater, Nova Scotia through the media timeout for the 14th annual Para Hockey Cup on HockeyCanada.ca. In partnership with HN Live, I'm Dave Dawson. Calvin Bellows, Corey Brogan, broadcast crew in Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. It's been an incredible week, and it's the semifinal day. Semifinal number one, Canada, Czechia go toe to toe later on today. Canada beat Czechia 5 0 in the preliminary game. Lost yesterday to America 3 2 in overtime while Czechia beat Italy 3 2 in their final preliminary game. Centering attempt out in front. Bolton couldn't tap it in. Nichols now has a hat trick. Plays cross ice. Eustace drops it off. Bolton. Douglas in behind. Only player so far on this U.S. roster who hasn't got a point still, to my knowledge, is Grove. 22 for USA. I don't know if I saw him take many shifts at all, but let's have a look. See if he's got any points, just to refresh that. Every player on this American roster has got a point so far in this tournament. Eustace now. Leaves it there for McKee. McKee, cross ice, Musselman. Musselman left to right, back to left to Eustace. Tight Italian box right in front of the net. Good heads up play by Easley, not touching it before he needed to, or else it would have been a penalty for too many players. Musselman leaves it behind the net. That's Wallace. Right wing pass, Musselman. Over the line for Team USA, Jones. And Bally picks it off. America gets it right back again. Musselman. Trying to count up Musselman's points here. Two assists in the game so far. And down low, Jones after it. Bumps with Ramadi. 26 to 2, the shots in favor of Team USA. They beat Czechia 10 0 in game number one. 9 to 2, they beat Italy in their second preliminary contest. And on their way in the driver's seat to another convincing victory here to launch themselves back into yet another gold medal game. Team USA won gold all the way back to 2015. Silver in 2013, Canada won gold 2012. 2011, silver. Then a bronze in April of 2011. There were two events in 2011, November and April. The first gold was in 2009, and a pair of bronzes in 07 and 08. Farmer. Right circle, Roybal. Flip pass to Nichols. Nichols, nice across to Farmer, but Radice stick got there first. You could tell the fatigue of Radice. Not only exhausting with a short bench, just the game itself, but when you're constantly playing defense in your own zone against a high-powered opponent, mentally exhausting too, not only physically. Douglas. And the Americans just happen to play keep away here as Bolton will put it at the net. And it's 11 nothing. Bolton second of the game. Off the dry end to leap, on the dump in. Team USA goal scored by number 10, Brett Bolton. Assist number 16, Declan Farmer. 
And number 17, Chris Douglas. Time of that goal, 2.58. But de la part des États-Unis, inscrit par le numéro 10, Brett Bolton, assisté par le numéro 16, Declan Farmer, et le numéro 17, Chris Douglas, à 2 minutes et 58 secondes. Most points in one year. The record for that is Greg Westlake in 2011. He had 18. 2011, I should say, at 18. I think I said that. Brad Bowden as well that year also had 18. Declan Farmer coming into this game had 10. And more pressure for Team USA. Eustace circles at the point, and again, America not really attacking the net, just playing a possession game, and if there's a path at the net, they take it, but the aggressive side of their game, more just now a puck possession. So if you're potentially new to the sport and maybe wondering why the score is so lopsided and why are there still goals being scored, well, I like to think that, uh, I love the quote that Declan Farmer made early, early on in the tournament. And after the first lopsided game, he said, we want to raise our opponents up. And I know even chatting with Mirko Bianchi before the game, he said, there's potential this could be a, a lopsided game. But he said, you know what? I want that for my program to be able to raise our level. I don't want to be beaten in a lopsided score, but if it's going to be a lopsided score, I want our team to be able to learn how to play in these games so we can be better and better and better and the sport will grow. And it only forces athletes to improve. If you've ever spent time with an athlete, I mean just an athlete, we're talking, you know, maybe a soccer player, a lacrosse player, not even a national or provincial level, they want to get better. So you take that level to provincial level, they want to get better. How about a national level? These are Olympic athletes. They know how to deal with losing lopsided games because they'll take that as momentum or a lesson and want to gain momentum from that and take that into their routines and get better. And it's a, they have a respect for the game. 11 nothing. America leads. A lot of respect for the American program across the world. And they're in a great spot to get back to yet another gold medal game in 15 more minutes. Stay with us. We will return to the 2022 Para Hockey Cup on HockeyCanada.ca. This is a partnership with HN Live.
Hi, I'm Scott Don, and I'm the president of Berkshire Hathaway Energy Canada. I grew up in a small town, Saskatchewan, and you know, you had a curling rink and a hockey rink. And uh, while I played both, hockey was the chosen uh, sport. Just like every kid in Canada, I think, uh, just really wants to be on the ice, and it's just part of, you know, what it was growing up for me. Good to meet you, man. Hi. Hello. Good to see you. Thanks for coming up. Yeah, no problem. Our mom passed away when Gage was eight and he needed an outlet and we both decided that to give hockey a try and he just blossomed from there. He's actually made quite a few friendships. He was really closed off in, a sh in his own shell when he first started because everybody already knew each other. So he's built those, those, lifelong, those lifelong connections. Just makes the team like more fun, makes the game a lot more better because we all know each other. Oh, stack you Why are you stacking the pack? Today getting out with Gage was so much fun. Not only do I just love to get out there because I love love the game, but you know, as you as we saw it, it, we didn't really do anything too structured. That was golden. Like to just let the kids play and they loved it. You could just see the love of the game show up. Oh, yeah, there you go. Good job, Gabe. We all love hockey in Canada, and so it was just a natural for us to seek out Hockey Canada. You know, I think the Assist Fund is just so important because we've always known that getting kids active is good for them physically and mentally. And that's where I think it's incumbent on us and why we've been so focused on the helping those kids get into a game that we all love so much. Without this program this year, Gage probably wouldn't have been on the ice. And it's really awesome to be able to thank some of the people that have helped us along this way in person. When, when you become our age, then that first few years doesn't make it easy. Yeah, yeah. Now that was never something that we had to face as, as a family. But for, for Gage, that was a reality. He wouldn't be on the ice today if it wasn't for the assist fund. I don't know what I would be doing without hockey, really. To be able to see someone that you know that you've helped stay in the game versus not be able to play at all, it's so impactful. Hey Gage, I really enjoyed our time uh, out on the ice and you were so inspiring because you're a rock star. I love your shot and I hope you scored a thousand goals because you've got, you've got quite the talent. And uh, I just wanted you to know that I took so much away from all the things that you do and how you have really loved the game that uh, I want to thank you for the time on the ice today. A lot of work goes on behind the scenes um, in preparation for our dreams come true. We had uh, phenomenal volunteers um, on the ground here in Iqaluit um, as part of the Iqaluit Amateur Hockey Association. Uh, they worked with the school systems to identify 30 kids that are interested in getting a late start to hockey. This essentially lights a spark for these children because some of these kids can't afford to get into hockey and it's a barrier and so taking that barrier away allows us to get these kids on the ice and help develop those interpersonal skills and, and also the skills of being in a team and working at towards something bigger. You're going to be a better player than your dad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably. <Yeah. laughs> we found that hockey in the north, especially since we have long winters, it really provides a spark uh, for these children to get out here, play a team sport, learn those critical uh, life skills about how to work together, how to work hard. Down your hockey stance. You're going to push all the way out. Bring it right back in. All for him to start up his hockey uh, passion to build the friendships and for the Dreams Come True program to be able to provide the registration and equipment, uh, I couldn't ask for anything more. Hockey's always been a passion and I'm glad my son is able to take part. Things like this are um, incredibly helpful. It makes a huge impact. People are very thankful. Um, it's incredibly generous and it helps kids start hockey from a young age with equipment that they can pass on to other siblings and neighbors and it'll get used in the community 10 times over. Well, I think an understated thing uh, about Nunavut itself is like the mental health of our children. 
Like the, the pandemic is such a detrimental impact of socialization, getting out there, being with a team. And so this is a profound change for a lot of these kids' lives to get out here, get together, get back into uh, the things that make us all human, essentially, which is that interaction and getting out here, getting healthy, getting active. The experience of the children is the number one thing that we look to focus on. And having those kids show up here in a safe environment where we can provide a structured program and structure for them themselves when they come to our programs. And they benefit immensely and it follows them for the rest of their lives. The fact that we can welcome 30 families um, to the game and provide an opportunity that they might not otherwise have really means a lot to Hockey North. Special thanks to the Hockey Canada Foundation for making this event uh, possible and for allowing us to um, play such an important role in these kids' life. Thank you, Hockey Canada Foundation. Thank, Thank you, Hockey, Hockey Canada! Canada. Get the game right at your fingertips. The Hockey Canada Network gives coaches and players the tools to excel in all areas of the game. Drills, skill videos, practice plans, and articles from some of the best in the game are available on your Android or iOS device anywhere, anytime. You don't want William or other children to miss out on doing something that they really want to do because you just can't afford it. Well, when he first started, he was five years old and he wanted to play. And, you know, we were taking him to get his equipment and he said, this is the best day of my life. And he, he didn't even know what he was getting into. He lights right up and he tries so hard and he gets so excited when he sees us. He comes over and, you know, it. that's what makes me happy is just to see he just glows. He's just so proud that he's on the ice because he loves hockey. I was good at like skating and passing and um, being defense. I really wanted to be forward, but they put you in what you are good at. William was diagnosed with high-functioning autism and ADHD, and I was told give up any dream you've ever had of your son playing sports on a team. Well, all you have to do is talk to William and ask him about his hockey to see what he it means up. to him. And I don't know really what else outside of school William would be doing. She did talk initially last fall about gear and the cost and stuff and wondering how she was going to be able to arrange it and stuff like that and then obviously everything's happened and it's, it's, really it's so worth Telling William, by the way, we might not be able to join hockey this year. It's not really fair to him because as long as my kids give effort into something and they want to learn something, I believe I should be able to find a way. One of my friends, I was talking to her, and she's like, oh, why don't you try this one? And I was like, I never even heard of that. That was the easiest application that they could fill out, actually. It's great that people can donate, and you know, it gives young kids like William and other young people a chance to do something, play hockey, get out there, do stuff that he really loves to do. I just see how much it helps William. I'm just happy that he's happy and it's nice to have a hockey family, so yeah. He's the best thing that could have happened. He's, he's great. I take him wherever he wants to go. He's just a nice kid to have around. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Hockey Canada Foundation, for giving my son William an assist. Have you ever wanted to combine academics with athletics or hockey with homework? The Hockey Canada Skills Academy gives young Canadians a chance to hone their skills through a unique school-based program that includes more time on the ice, up to 400 extra hours every year, and an opportunity for staff to incorporate Canada's game into the curriculum. 
To learn more on how you can bring Hockey Canada Skills Academy to your school, visit hockeycanada.ca slash HCSA and we'll see you on the ice or in the classroom. The beautiful Clearwater Arena, the home of the South Shore Lumberjacks of the Maritime Hockey League Junior A program. 
the host of the 2022 Para Hockey Cup, the Lunenburg County Lifestyle Center. It's been a great host to Calvin Bellows and I as well. We've been here the whole week long, and uh, some youngsters in attendance. There have been some students from schools in the area who have made some signs and been in support of a lot of the locals and been received really well. The second time they've hosted this international tournament, 2016, prior to try to get back here, obviously, in 2020, 2021, but due to the pandemic, not able to. So grateful to be back again here in Bridgewater. My first trip out to Nova Scotia, as well as Calvin Bellows, and it's been an incredible experience. Some of the faithful that we've run into. Our very first night, we stopped for a little bit of a fish sandwich, as we were told is a good thing to do when you're out in Nova Scotia. Just sitting there having our meal, and the couple beside us said, excuse me, I, I can't help but overheard you talking about where you want to go. In the, in the city. Well, here's what I think you should do when you're in town. Listed off about 15 different places. Oh, by the way, you want lobster? Here's how to cook a lobster. Here's how we do it at our place. It took the time to chat with us and welcome us to the area, and it's been like that from the very, very beginning to all four programs we've been able to talk to, from the Americans to the Italians to the Czechs as well as the Canadians. Been treated like kings the moment we've landed in Nova Scotia. And such an honor to work with Hockey Canada again. We've Partnered with them throughout the summer for the summer series, the Canada and USA Women's uh, Series, as well as the World Junior Preliminary Camp, the U-17 Camp. Did that in the summertime. We did the 2019 World Junior A Challenge in Dawson Creek, and we're headed back to Cornwall, Nova Scotia. We're headed to Cornwall for the World Junior A Challenge, which starts in a couple weeks. Very excited to be working with Hockey Canada again. Dave Dawson, Calvin Bellows, Corey Bro. Your team taking care of all the business. It's our seventh game. We have one more to go. Turn it over to our more than capable friends at TSN. They'll do the bronze and the gold on Saturday. Very, very grateful to be the streaming provider for the preliminaries for this event. And here we go. Third period underway from Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. Italy's second time they've played in this Para Hockey Cup. 2017, they lost to Korea 6-3 in the bronze medal game. And Jones has a goal here today. Mishevitz, a multi-point game. To Pally, we'll flip it down and try and hit the net. And Lamar, regardless if it's going icing or not, I think we'll probably vacate the cage to encourage the clock to go even faster than it likely will. Not an icing call, obviously it'll stop. <laughs> And Larch, the third period is where Italy came alive. They were down 9-0 after two periods in the preliminary game and outshot USA 3-2 in the third, namely because very likely just letting off the gas. And America, I think, at this point in time, is it's dumped in on Castladder, who came in a relief of Arauto after the opening period. For America, I think it'll be just work on your cycle game not getting sloppy and if their opportunities are to shoot they'll try to shoot and score but not attempt to set it up with the purpose of scoring but if opportunities come they come and for italy for sure a goal minute pace and it's all tied up that's likely the speech given but i think more than anything just positive experience learning how to play the top of your game against an opponent that will go down in history as one of the greatest programs that will continually be at top of the para hockey game for years to come. And if you are new to para hockey and you're watching this for the first time, and I'll use for one time the stand-up hockey comparison because I think it's an easy comparison because naturally stand-up hockey, there are a lot of fans for that. So when it comes to your players like your Brody Roybals and Declan Farmer, Josh Pauls, those are your Jeremy Ronicks, your Brett Halls. Those are the benchmark pillar players in the history of America para hockey. Those are the kind of people you're watching right now. So in 20, 30 years, you know, when you're telling stories to your grandkids, you say, yep, I got to watch one of these guys play. And incredible human beings as well. I really do encourage you, if you get an opportunity to watch a game live, ask for the privilege to meet one of these players. 
and get a picture with them because that's a picture worthy moment. Heroes, and everybody's got a story, regardless if you're playing para or you're playing able bodied or whatever you're playing or whatever you're doing in life. Everyone's got a story to encourage someone else with, and naturally, some of these competitors in this event are some of the best stories you'll find in life that'll encourage you for years to come. As McKee, one of the all-time leading scorers in this program as well, fourth all-time. Being supplied information here by Seamus Kelly, communications for Team USA. It's been very, very helpful to keep things going. As Jack Wallace, the USA para leader for five goals in a game, and we'll wait to see if somebody can get to that total today. 14 goals historically has been in one game, the most in the Para Cup has been scored. And I would be surprised if we have a whistle, regardless uh, if either not a penalty or a goal, as each team likely just trying to play it out here. As America will play for another gold medal game. Depali would like for more whistles because it would mean more goals for him. And more goals for his program. Christopher Depali, two goals. Yesterday in a very entertaining hockey game against Czechia in their final preliminary contest. There was 2-2 into the third. And the Pally, a breakaway goal that was just sensational. Very, very skilled young player. Is 62 white. A lot of great skill on either side of the ice here today. 29 to 2, the shots in this one. Five minutes gone in the third. Woodkey. We'll leave it there for Jones, sidestepping the Italian defender and Jones. One on five. We'll just dump it back and change. Farmer now on retrieval. Long lead pass past Roybal, and Macri's going to chase it, and we will have an icing call as it'll head all the way back into the America zone. I believe for the first faceoff in this game in USA territory, Calvin Bellows, am I correct? That is correct. As you have a look at Brody Roybal, my first interview of the tournament. Should have got a picture with him. 184 points coming into this tournament from Brody Roybal. And at 190 now, while well, coming into this game was 190 and getting even closer to 200 points, including the 100 goal plateau, which he would love to hit that before the end of this tournament. He's got one more game after this. Bolton up with Farmer and Roybal. Right side Farmer. Farmer thinks about it. Left hand to right hand. In behind now Roybal. Cross ice Bolton. Got his first game on a penalty shot in this one. Special moment for number 10. And that's going to be held on to by Castlatter. <laughs> David Eustace from Davenport, Iowa. Playing his 23rd international contest. As the draw comes to the left side of Cass Ladder, Eustace wins the draw, Musselman. Down low, cycles with McKee. McKee on the half wall, sends it across to Eustace, touched, and Cavalieri will rip it away. Nichols stops at the line. A rolling puck, trying to hit the backside. And Pace picking up a little bit here. Near the midway point of the third. Musselman down behind. Bump there by Andreoni. A lot of hockey game left in his mind. And anytime you get onto the ice surface and you get the privilege of playing international hockey, you can tell any one of these players will tell you that. Doesn't matter how much time's on the clock, 
It's a privilege to play the game. As Musselman calls for it, on his right hand, leaves it to the right point for Eustace. Over skates it and back out again, Douglas. Looks on, Dodson, McKee calls and receives. Musselman. Douglas and Mishevitz pitch and, pitch and catch. St. Cloud, Minnesota native, Chris Douglas. As Dodson watches that go by him, and it'll roll all the way down. Almost to Lamar, but Easley's there first. Malik Jones. Still got a lot of gas left there. 19 years old from Aurora, Colorado. Quite a few youngsters in this event. Youngest one being uh, Matteo Pelizzari on the Canadian roster. At 15, and oh, what a save in front by Castladder. Takes an odd deflection off of Macri, I believe, and Castladder had to get the paddle there and secure it. Good hand-eye coordination by my opinion, probably, there's so many great goaltenders we've seen in this tournament. I don't know if I can necessarily say maybe the best one, but a guy who's probably seen more high percentage shots than anyone, arguably, I would say, by mass amounts. And if you're talking of how many pucks he's faced and how many of them have been grade A quality, Cast Ladder, I think, in my personal opinion, has been the goalie of the tournament. Wallace. Jen Lee's made some great saves, but just hasn't had the workload. Or Cast Ladder has seen a lot of pucks and made some great ones. Roybal, left point. Six minutes left in the game. Wallace. Cross ice. And right on to Macri as Farmer will take it. And they're just happy to work on their zone time cycle game now. Roybal. Bolton. Across Farmer. Flip pass, Roybal. And just puck possession. Backside Bolton behind him, Ramadi. Send it along the boards to relieve some pressure to Pally. Nice little move to, uh, great job by Pauls to keep it in. That's not easy. Collision at center as the Americans are changing and Dumped down by Italy. Now Nichols. Like to watch where the players hold the sticks to accelerate as well as McKee's in. McKee had a window to shoot it, but offense not the main objective right now. Just run the clock. Musselman. As the Americans are changing to the point, Dodson. And used this right on McKee and tight, cleared out of the way by the Italian defender. And picking up the loose change is Musselman now. Dominant cycle by America. It's a thing of beauty to watch. How well they control it, confidently cycle, wear down their defense. Italy gets the puck briefly, but then America gets it back again, kept in at the line by Easley. Exhausting, absolutely exhausting for the opponents to try and contend with. When they finally get an opportunity in neutral, it's about all they got to send it down because American defenders and forwards collapse so quick. Musselman sidesteps Stella with 3.50 to go in the game. Scramble behind easily frees it up. Mishevitz now. Cross ice Wallace, 30 to two the shots. 
Wallace just trying to keep it away. Stay away from Enderley. It was 1-0, 28 seconds into this game, and America has not looked back. Douglas got the goal from Roybal. And Mishevitz. Nichols from Wallace. Nichols again from Woodkey and McKee. Mishevitz, Roybal, Eustace. Wallace from McKee. Nichols, Wallace, Musselman. Farmer, Easley. That well, was after one period. Four goals in the second. Bolton on a penalty shot. Dodson from Musselman and McKee. Jones from Easley, Mishevitz. Bolton from Farmer and Douglas. Here's Farmer. 12 points in the tournament. Farmer flipped across. And Italy will just send it out, but only to center. Brody Roybal on it. North Lake, Illinois, Brody Roybal. Played in the 2014 Olympics as well as in 2022. Been with the program since 2013. Five points in Beijing, including two goals. Now to neutral territory again. Italy has been in every Olympics since 2006. And America has medaled every year in this event. As we have an icing call with, or excuse me, an offside call. And the media timeout with 121 remaining in the game. That's how much pressure America has put on this one. We'll take our final break and return to Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. Team USA, 80 seconds away from heading back to their 10th consecutive gold medal game at the Para Hockey Cup. They have won eight of the 13 gold medals in this event in its now 14 year history. Canada's won the other five. Only two teams have won gold. And to the final minute of play in the third period, as the winner, of Canada and Czechia will meet America on Saturday afternoon for gold. Musselman. An American muscle it has been in this one. Absolutely incredible to watch. Their ability to control the play, cycle the puck, get it back again and do whatever they want to do with it. Loose pucks are the first one there. Three American players get there first. And for Italy, they'll get there eventually. Mirko Bianchi, first year head coach, been with the program since 2016 as an assistant coach. Said it's the first year they've actually had a head coach of the program. Coaches stand up hockey as well. Is excited for the future of Italian hockey, but in the meantime, the future still belongs to America. 11-0, dominant performance as they're off to their 10th consecutive gold medal game. Every player on the American roster has got a point in this tournament. Signed from one, a lot of multi-point games in this one. And another shutout for Griffin Lamar. 
We'll turn it over to in-house announcer Dave Walker, then return to wrap. The player of the game for Team Italy is number four, Matteo Remoti. Le joueur du match pour l'équipe d'Italie est le numéro 4, Matteo Remoti. Well, Matteo Remoti had an assist in this tournament so far from Bolzano, Italy. The player of the game for Team USA, number 18, Evan Nichols. Evan Nichols with a hat trick. They save that puck. Le joueur du match pour l'équipe des États-Unis, numéro 18, Evan Nichols. From Haymarket, Virginia, and what a performance today, Team USA, 11 nothing, the final. A uh, picturesque moment right there. And for Italy, they got a bright future in this program and para hockey Again, overall. Like a special thank you to the support of our fans, partners, and today's participating teams. Thank you, and we hope to see you back here tonight at 7 p.m. to watch Team Czechia take on Team Canada. Canada and Czechia go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and the winner of that heads off to the gold medal game. USA dominant one more time, 11 zip, 31 to 2 the shots unofficially in the final. On behalf of Calvin Bellows, Corey Bro, and our entire staff at HN Live in partnership with Hockey Canada, this is Dave Dawson saying thank you so much for watching. This is a presentation of the 2022 Para Hockey Cup from Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. We'll see you at 7 p.m. Atlantic time.